Again, thank you very much uh, for coming out today. We really appreciate it. Uh, and as everyone is aware, uh, the water bottle, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, water depot has uh, opened. It opened uh, before noon today. Uh, the water uh, depot is at the Jack Burger Complex. It will be operating from 12 noon till 8 uh, every day until further notice. And again, really the water bottle depot really is only uh, there to assist our community members. Uh, our community has really been doing a great job on conservation and uh, the water depot is about uh, supplementing your, uh, your ongoing conservation. We really do appreciate that. Uh, to date, uh, we has as of one o'clock, we have processed 220 vehicles and supplied 550 cases of water to the public. Uh, in regards to our uh, public inquiries line, we've had uh, 113 uh, inquiries to this date. And uh, we've had a number of questions that have come through in regards to our normal practice of daily testing. We are continuing our normal practice to, in daily testing of our water. A part of uh, that testing method, uh, a certain amount of flushing is done before a sample is taken. Uh, members of the public have raised concern that we're doing our flushing program. We are not using any excess water. Any flushing that you see is in regards to our normal practice of testing. And again, our water quality is uh, continues to be of the highest standard. Uh, again, uh, the Jack Berger Sports Complex, our water depot is located there. Uh, we are continuing to ask members of the public to conserve. Uh, it really is making a difference and we're able to uh, reduce the stress on the three pumps that are operating at this point at the, uh, at the water treatment plant. And uh, Really, I'd like to uh, thank members of the public if there, if there have been any issues. Uh, they're calling in, they're letting us know and providing us with information so we can deal with those. Uh, I really want to thank those who uh, uh, donated water in regards to the Canadian Tire Foundation, uh, Nestle Canada, Walmart, Sobeys, and Tim Hortons. We really do appreciate that and all of the volunteers that have helped to distribute uh, water. And really, at this time, I will uh, open up to questions. An update on uh, Cameco? Yes. Um, currently, Cameco is still shut down. We have had discussions with them and trying to seek alternative means to provide them with water. Uh, currently, we have a, it. Uh, it could be up to two weeks plus until we are able to supply them with water. Uh, our first concern is to the residents of the community and, and to the community as a whole. Uh, we are working on alternative supplies. We've had excellent meetings and works with them. Uh, and I will note, uh, we have put calls out and we've received calls from communities all across Ontario. And they have, uh, in helping us find a portable, potable pump. It's not just pumps. We've had offers of pumps from everywhere but it's a very specific pump that, to handle potable water that's required. And uh, we believe we have some uh, um, opportunities out there to, to connect directly from the uh, water plant to Cameco to get them up and operational as soon as possible. And that's why though it may take up to two weeks because it's that specific type of pump? Uh, that's right. And if we, it, it would be minimum two weeks before we could provide them with anything, but actually they could be up much sooner if we can find an alternative source. And that's what we're working on because the length of time is is two weeks. I understand that um, uh, according to Cameco officials that uh, they haven't laid off anyone, they're just having them do other things. Is that correct? Um, to my knowledge, they would have to answer that, but that's to my knowledge, that's true. Uh, it's my understanding that none of our industries have laid off any employees. Yeah, Thompson, was there any kind of rebate being considered for property owners who have had to pull their water during this, uh, during this crisis? Um, those type of considerations have not been made. Uh, 
in regards to conservation. Uh, I'm sure there will be a difference uh, uh, in that area, but uh, and not at this time. Our, all of our efforts are really being put on uh, dealing with the issue at hand. When you mentioned earlier all um, uh, certain kinds of issues are being brought to your attention by the uh, public and mm -hmm. responding to them, what kind of issues would those be? Uh, we had a report of some of our car dealers washing cars and they were only doing a limited number of cars. Uh, they have all ceased uh, to do that uh, and they've all complied. In fact, we've heard from some that uh, you know they are not doing it. We've had uh, the local school boards have been great. Um, we've heard from TCS they're using paper plates, etc. and that. They've, uh, again, the schools, businesses, we've had calls from local restaurants, again, telling us that they've cut down, they're using paper products, so not to, use, to have to use uh, dishwashers, etc. What about um, places like um, hair salons, that kind of thing? Any um, policies as it relates to those? We are, our policies are consistent with the press releases we've issued in regards to 100 cubic meters are the only businesses uh, that have been requested at this time to cease operation, those and uh, uh, laundry mats and car washes. We have had a number of industries and institutions, again, that have contacted us and identified that they are of their own fruition cutting back and, see, and uh, conserving water. But you are meeting the demand and, and don't see the need to uh, bring in other policies at this time? That's right. We have been, uh, uh, the community is doing a great job and we can really see that. And our key is to, to lessen the stress on the uh, pumping station as it stands right now. Uh, the MOE is working with us also and, and uh, we're having wonderful cooperation in regards to the three pumps that are in operation. One pump is working uh, consistently, a second pump is only being used intermittently to meet peak demands, and the third pump is being used as a backup and held. And so as long as we continue to conserve until the other pumps are repaired and in place, uh, we really thank the community for the work that they're doing. Is there any timetable on, on, are you looking to have a replacement parts for the pumps that are not functioning, or would you be considering brand new pumps to replace those existing pumps. And the issue again is the impellers, which we've showed pictures of, and I do believe we've got some, may have some new pictures uh, available. Um, the, the pumps themselves are fine. The issue is the impellers. Uh, we have, the, there are parts that are currently at the, uh, uh, at the facility, and, and that's be, one pump is being repaired. And our timelines uh, were remaining the same as having one pump in place by the end of this week and a second pump in place by the end of next week. Uh, we actually have another set of uh, impellers are currently in the air. We've chartered a, a plane to ensure that they are here and on their way to, uh, to ensure that uh, those parts are here. So could that second pump operate on what you have in, in stock now or do you have to wait to ship them? This private plane to, to uh, repair the second pump. We are waiting those the parts that are being uh, uh, expedited to us currently are for the second pump. Where's that coming in from? It's coming in from the U.S. All of the pumps were made uh, and uh, the parts uh, were made in the uh, southern states. When do you expect that to arrive? Uh, this evening. And there are time. There is a mechanical time in regards to uh, prepping the pumps and installing those. And um, uh, we asked yesterday at, uh, at the news conference um, who the supplier is. And I have not uh, provided that information. Have you discussed it with the um, uh, members of council or the uh, emergency group? There have been a great deal of discussions and uh, further uh, investigations into the root cause will happen at a later date and that information will be available at this time. Our priority is uh, maintaining our water supply. Can you give us an update on how the, uh, the three pumps are holding up? Has there been any uh, deterioration uh, uh, in them? I know that you stated before we're, that they're... Yeah, and we're doing monitoring in regards to vibration and all of those things. Uh, 
to date things are looking very well and as again with the with the conservation methods we are only using continuing to use one pump and only intermittently a second pump and uh, it looks very good in regards to the uh, pumps are repaired and in place so once the parts do arrive at the uh, treatment plant what's the turnaround time from the time they arrive to the time that pump would be back up and running and actually the parts, uh, the uh, pumps have been tore down. They are at a, a machine shop uh, or a, a repair facility uh, to deal with those. And there is some time to ensure that the shafts and bearings are, and everything is balanced and uh, up before it can be shipped back to the plant and put into place. That's why the current pump that's being worked on will be, uh, is scheduled to be up and running this week by this Friday and the second pump by the end of next week. Can you talk about the pictures up there, the sure. two impellers? Is that a good impeller or a bad impeller? Uh, you can see the deterioration around that area. Looks a little that, frayed. Um, yeah, and that's a good one. Uh, and the bad one now, what, what, it looks like, da why does it look so damaged? Has you been yeah. bringing up carcasses from the ocean or something? No, this is interior. The, this is treated water. Uh, we have been doing metallurgic testing in regards to this failure. It is unprecedented. We've had the MOE, we've had people in the business for years. Um, this is unprecedented. Um, that's why metallurgic testing is being done into regards to this. And I will note uh, the three pumps. These pumps are lifting the water from the uh, facility to the distribution. So the, all of the water is meeting all of the requirements and being treated. And it's, so it's not that issue. We've got lots of water in the plant. It's about pumping it out to the distribution center. We have checked all other pumps in, in the, throughout the system, and they, are, they do not have this problem. Because, I mean, you know, it looks physically damaged. Absolutely. And how does water do that? Right? And, and uh, as we noted, a complete root cause analysis will be done uh, at that time, and, and testing has been done. In it's not sabotage, is it? Uh, this is, these are internal pumps. It, it is believed that the most likely possibility is a metallurgical, a metallurgical problem. I'll say that quickly. What does that mean, a metallurgical uh, problem? An issue with the metal that it was made out of. Not strong enough, or whatever. No, could not necessarily. No, it's. Uh, we can discuss that after. Well, the uh, impellers are made of brass, aren't they? Yes. Yes. And is there any discussion about having? A different material used? We have opened up, uh, we've, uh, as I noted I believe yesterday, we've ordered uh, parts for all of the pumps and uh, we've also ordered stainless steel parts. Uh, at this time we are going to have another scrum uh, with our emergency operations center. It is still operating 24 hours a day uh, with the uh, a great deal of input from staff and uh, we continue to uh, monitor the situation and are working to resolve it as soon as we can. Thank you.